Hi, my name is Tom Cook. I'm an emergency physician with Prisma Health and the University of South Carolina. And this is a short video on how to use EPSS to evaluate left ventricular function. EPSS, of course, is an acronym which stands for E-point septal separation. And to do this exam, we'll start out in B mode and we'll get a view in the parasternal long axis. You can do this with the parasternal short axis, but uh, we'll use the long axis for this particular demonstration. And we'd like to focus on the mitral valve. The mitral valve is the largest valve in the heart. It's also the only one with two leaflets, and the anterior leaflet in particular is much larger than the posterior leaflet. Very, very easy to see in this examination. We like to focus on the tip of the anterior leaflet and see how it moves towards the interventricular septum. And if the patient has normal function, as blood comes from the left atrium into the left ventricle, we'd like to see that valve open completely and the tip of that leaflet touch the interventricular septum. EPSS allows us to quantify that movement of the anterior leaflet. To do that, we'll go into M mode. M mode stands for motion mode. And what it does is it takes all the changes in echogenicity along this line and it maps it out over time. So the Y axis is depth and the X axis is time. When we do that, we can see that this area up here, which is black in the right ventral, corresponds to this area. We can see that the interventricular septum corresponds to this area. We can see that this bright area down here, which is the pericardium, is this area. And we can also see the anterior leaflet of the mitral valve is represented by this waveform right here in the middle of all that black area, which is the left ventricle. We focus our attention on this particular waveform. And when we get something that we think is good enough to measure, we'll go ahead and freeze that image. Now, as the heart goes through the cardiac cycle, we can see that the tip of the anterior leaflet moves towards the interventricular septum. This is the early part of diastole. You have a large amount of blood coming out of the atrium and going in to fill the left ventricle. And so the valve opens to its greatest point and you can see the tip of that leaflet gets very, very close to the interventricular septum. As the chamber starts to fill, the valve starts to shut and then the atria contracts and you get a second waveform, which is typically not as big as the first waveform. The larger of the two waves is referred to as the E wave, as an early diastole, and the second wave is called the A wave for atrial contraction. E point septal separation asks us, what is the distance between the E wave and the interventricular septum during diastole? And the way we measure that is to go into our measurement menu right here. We tap on EPSS, and then we establish our first line uh, near the interventricular septum, and we establish our second line near the tip of the E wave. We move those two so they are in precisely on the points that we want, and then we look at the measurement. And in this particular situation, we can see that it's right around eight millimeters. Eight millimeters and left is a normal value for E point septal separation. And in this particular uh, system, you can see with Clarius that it actually estimates the ejection fraction at 55%. So in summary, EPSS is a very quick way to quantitatively assess left ventricular function and can be used in a number of different situations at the bedside.